Hello, everybody. Hello. Just getting my project that I'm working on. I got a little sidetracked. As usual, I shut my door. Okay. How's it going, everybody? Hello, hello. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I'm gonna fix that a little bit. Okay. All right, so it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to talk about today. I really have been trying to find some kind of focus for these videos. Um, Cause I don't know, I guess I don't feel like my life is all that crazy to talk about. I do a lot of the same stuff every day. Um, you know, a lot of YouTubers and bloggers out there go, you know, go to Michael's and talk about new yarn and, um, I don't know. I, I guess I feel like people will get tired of hearing, you know, that I drank my coffee and worked on Etsy orders. <laughs> so, uh, I've definitely been trying to, you know, figure out what I really want to talk about on these shows, because I do feel like it is kind of like a podcast or a vlog or whatever. And so, you know, I can share what I'm working on, but it takes me a while to get through projects. So um, I guess I could talk about all of my unfinished, like, because I have, I think, four or five projects that I'm working on right now, so I can always share my updates on that, but I kind of wanted to have some kind of, some kind of soft focus for, for my videos, uh, other than just kind of talking about what's happening in my life. Um, so today, and I don't know what everyone's talking about, I need to come... Uh, and check the chat. I haven't popped the chat out yet, and I can't read it on my uh, on my phone. It's too far away. Uh, let's see. And I think most people said that they do still like my videos, even when I ramble. So that's kind of cool, you know. <laughs> okay, so let me. Oh. No, it's not what I wanted to do. And I know this is going to come on and I'm going to be talking. I want to pop the chat out. Where is that? Pop out chat. There we go. That's what I needed. Okay, now I can see what everybody's talking about. I say everyone says hello. I see Ellen is here. Nancy, Nilla, Emma, Sindra, Jamie. Yes. And yes, Ellen is uh, a moderator on here, which is wonderful. It's so nice to have someone who uh, can help me when I have weirdos in the chat and can get rid of them. <laughs> and I say weirdos, like, I think we're all weirdos. So I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just saying, like, people who come on and are like, hey, shorty, like, any single ladies in the chat? <laughs> Because we've had that happen, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so definitely uh, needed someone to help me with that because that was a bit of a mess with me trying to um, stay focused and then seeing the stuff in the chat and dealing with that, so thank you so much, Ellen. I really appreciate it. It's very helpful. Um, okay, so I'm going to at least start us off with what I wanted our topic to be today, and then I do have a project that I'm working on. Um, I'm actually making a winky jacket for my grandmother-in-law, um, and it's getting there. I've actually got, I've got, this is one panel, this is the second front panel, and then this is the back panel. So, um, I just need to, I'm going to sew them all together, uh, today while I'm on here. You won't really be able to see it. I'll be working down here, but, um... Grace says, wait for a minute, I thought I was getting kicked out. No, no, all the good weirdos are welcome here. Yes. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be sewing up all of my edges and seams today on this jacket, and I'll be working on it up here on my desk. So I don't know if you guys will actually be able to see it, but it's not that, you know, it's not a tutorial video. So uh, thanks for the blue dress, Evelyn. I don't know what that means. You have to let me know what that means. I don't know. Okay, so on topic, see, I need topics to keep me focused. I'm starting a blog post about this because if I do the blog post first and then I do the video, then I can reference the blog post in the video. 
and then it helps me stay on track. Um, and then I'm not taking a whole bunch of notes that I'm not going to use for anything because that always feels awful when you do a bunch of research and then maybe you do a video, but then you have all this research and these notes that you took that you feel like are just kind of sitting there. So this way it's like a two for one because my research is the blog and then I can talk about it here. And that way too, I love if you guys have um, ideas and tips and things that you do that are on topic, you can share them here and I can add them to the blog. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so today's topic is all about finding crocheted garments that fit you in a way that you'd actually want to wear them out of the house, you know? Um, and the whole reason that I decided to cover this is because I see a lot of people, um, I'm in, I think, four or five crochet groups on Facebook, and I see a lot of people that post things that are really disheartening, that are like, you know, I, I stay away from garments because they just never work out. You know, they never fit me right. Um, I have to frog them a million times. I don't enjoy it. Um, they don't fit like the picture. They don't have my size. You know, I mean, it's, it's thing and thing and thing and thing, you know, that, that stack up against people. And there are so many people, like, everyone should feel like they can crochet their own clothes. And that, I mean, that's one of the main reasons I decided to, to offer beginner-friendly designs and because... It's, you know, I don't have to practice as much patience with beginner friendly designs. So uh, that's two for one for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that we should all feel confident in crocheting our own clothes. I think a lot of people start sewing and crocheting and knitting because they're like, I can make stuff for myself that I like, that fits me. Um, so I hate seeing that roadblock and I hate seeing people feel like they can't do it, like they can't make something that fits, that they, you know, are just getting frustrated. This isn't supposed to be frustrated. None of us start to crochet for frustration. <laughs> you know, we start to crochet because it calms us down and it gives us something to do creatively and it's empowering and it's positive, you know. Um, and even when I'm frogging things, for me, I try to see it as a learning experience. A lot of it has to do with the design process. You know, I have, and that's another thing, on one of these videos, I got to walk you through all of the unfinished objects that will never be finished because I decided they sucked. And I'm just going to take them apart because I was trying to design something and it wasn't working out. Um, and yeah, so I just gave up and now I just have to find the time to frog them. Um, but yeah, it can be frustrating. And I decided this would be a great topic to share and to have as a YouTube video out there. So if you are watching the replay of this video, you know, I hope that you find this helpful and I hope that it turns into an opportunity for you to feel confident picking out crochet patterns and finding ones that are not going to end up just making you sad or making you frustrated or annoyed, um, or just feeling like you wasted money, you know? Um, so let me make sure, as of course, I hid my chat. Okay, so Jamie said her name is Blue in the chat for being a moderator. Okay, so that's what it is. I had no idea. Um, and Ellen said, honestly, don't know where the term came from. Uh, blue dress. Okay, so that's like a term for the moderator. Well, that's good to know. Okay, so first things first, if you are here live, Thank you so much for joining again. Um, if you are new, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. That's super helpful for me. Um, and let me know if you've had this issue. So do you make clothes regularly? So that's the main thing. Have you ever made crochet clothing or not? So let me know if you've ever made any crochet wearables that are not, like that have sleeves. So let's say a vest or um, a top or a crop top, something that you actually wear and don't just like take off as an accessory. Um, so like not scarves or hats, but like vests or crop tops or, or cardigans or sweaters, pants, um, you know, skirts, if you've crocheted some type of wearable garment. And let me know how the process has been for you. So is it an enjoyable process? Have you had a good experience making clothing? Um, or has it been frustrating uh, for you? Have you kind of 
Do you have a lot of uh, projects that you've kind of pushed aside because you're not enjoying them? Um, I would love to know that first. And I'll kind of dive you in a little bit as to my experience with crocheting clothing before I started designing clothes. So um, I learned how to crochet in high school and then it wasn't until 2000, it had to have been, it was after I got married, I got married in 2012. Um, and I think it was while I was in grad school. So it was probably around 2013. So I graduated high school in 2006. Um, so it was probably around 2004 or five, maybe even three, I don't know, early 2000s that I learned how to crochet. Um, and it was quite a few years, you know, between then and 2013 when I tried making my first garment. At that time, when I started researching, okay, what are the best beginner friendly garments? Um, I kept coming back to these cocoon sweaters. So you guys know what I'm talking about, the cocoon sweater, where like you make a big rectangle and then you sew up the edges and then you make a little border and you wear it like a little cocoon. Probably one of the most ill-fitting crochet design sweaters that you can make. Um, they never seem to fit very well. Um, I've actually purchased some that were um, sewn together that way, like little cocoon sweaters with uh, pockets, and they they just never look right. And they may on other people, but they, they always look either too oversized or too little. Um, but yeah, that was my first go and I knit one. So I was knitting, I think I had the circular needles and I was knitting this big black, um, and black, yeah, not a colorful color, um, cocoon type sweater. Um, I think maybe I wore it once ever when I finished. I mean, it took a long time to finish it because it was little yarn. It was probably a three or four weight yarn on knitting needles. Um, and then, so I kind of gave up from there. I was like, ah, this is not my thing. Not something I'm interested in. Um, and at this time I did like chunky yarn. I really liked using five and six weight yarn, but I also realized there weren't a lot of wearable patterns out there for super chunky or bulky yarn. A lot of it was for three and four weight yarn. So I kind of gave up for a little while. And then in 2015 was when I really started um, uh, discovering the design, the uh, yarn companies like We Are Knitters and Wool in the Gang. Now they were ex super knitting focused and a lot of the super bulky and bulky patterns were for knitted cardigans, like the oversized jumbo, chunky knit cardigans. So I was like, what the heck, let's try one of these because they come in a kit. Um, and actually, uh, I am such a stickler for money that I just got one of their free knitting patterns and used Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick to make a my first true knit cardigan. Um, it was successful. It was a very pretty cardigan. It came out, I think, like it was supposed to. I made the right size, but it didn't fit very well. It didn't it didn't sit well, you know? So when I put it on, I never liked it. I never liked the way that it, that it looked on me. And um, so, and even, and, and just as an example, it wasn't just me. So my grandmother came over, my grandmother and my cousin. My cousin is in art school. She's an art teacher. Um, she's working on her master's now in like London, I think. Um, but they both came over and they saw this knit cardigan that I'd made. And I said, I didn't want it anymore if one of them wanted it. My grandmother was like, I need to get that cardigan. That is mine because my cousin wanted it. And she was like, no, I'm the grandma. I get the cardigan if I want it. And I was like, okay, me mom, but I don't think you're going to like it. Like, I don't think you're going to like the way it fits. And she tried it on and she didn't like it either. Just something about the fit of the cardigan, the way that it sat on my body. It just wasn't very flattering. Um, so my cousin took it and I hope she wears it because she wears like funky styled clothes and I figured she would kind of layer it and like make it look really cool. Um, but I feel like that happens to a lot of people. After that, I tried one more wearable because I found a super chunky cardigan. It was an Etsy pattern that I purchased that was like um, a three quarter length, big chunky sleeve with like a wrap belt. Um, and I guess I didn't think about the fact that the person modeling it always kind of had it off one shoulder. Who wears their stuff off one shoulder all the time? Like, it's not going to stay on. It's not going to be something that you would just wear around functionally throughout the day. Um, 
And so, you know, I, I got like halfway through it and I was like, I, I don't, I'm, just, I'm not feeling it, you know. So that's really when, it wasn't until 2020, because it was right after COVID, that I started making my own cardigans and saying, screw it, nobody else knows my body like me, I'm just going to focus on myself, make something that fits me. And I feel like a lot of people end up in that boat. So they try certain things and they realize, you know, I'm just going to wing it. But it takes a while of crocheting and following patterns to even feel comfortable really winging it. Because you have to have a bit of knowledge on fit and sizing and stitches and, you know, construction for you to be able to, to really wing it. So for a beginner, it may just feel so overwhelming that you're like, I'm just not going to fool with it anymore. Um, so I have a lot of comments, so I am going to check through the comments before I move forward. Um... Cindra said she just frogged the sleeves on a sweater that she's working on. They didn't match. Uh, so, like, was that a pattern issue? Was that, like, you just got focused on doing something else? I said, no, for me, I have put a sleeve on backwards. Um, and I can actually show you that. I kept the cardigan because I was like, nobody else is going to notice but me. So I didn't mind. Um, and you can see my little drawers down here with all of my finished pieces. Um, okay, it's in here. So many finished pieces. I feel like I need to do a fire sale of my finished pieces, but I guess since they're all the same size, would be limited as to who could buy them. Okay, so this was my uh, second Luna cardigan that I ever made. Um, and if you look at the sleeves, uh, you can see, I think you can see, yeah, this one on, oh, let me see if I can do this. This one has the ridges right here. This one does not. So I actually, I had the sweater flipped inside out on one side. So this sleeve was attached to the outside. The other sleeve was attached to the inside. So you can see even in the, uh, the cuffs, the cuffs don't match. So, um, it happens, you know, I, you, you know, especially if you like to, to crochet while you're doing other things. Um, and Cinder said create, she's creating the pattern. So my stitch count was off by about five stitches. Okay. That makes sense. In the design process, it's, it's all up in the air. <laughs> um, especially like I go, I love half double crochet. So when I'm trying to design a garment that's not using half double crochet, I'll totally, uh, get on autopilot and start half double crocheting <laughs> and won't realize it immediately. Um, Brittany Holt says she loves making garments. I follow the directions to a T and yet they never seem to fit right after they're made. There you go. Um, and you know, some of it may be dependent on the fact that, you know, all of us have different body types and there's, there's a reason why there's a million different bras out there, a million different cardigan styles out there, a million different jean fits out there because not every style of jean is right for everybody. Not every bra is right for everybody. Um, you know, you can see it in the reviews where you're like, well, if you have a larger chest, this is gonna look right on you. If you have a smaller chest, it's not, you know? So some of it may be the fact that if the designer has a very different body type than you, it, it might be difficult for them to design for other body types. So that's something that I am gonna focus on in this blog post and talk about a little bit. Um, Syndra, except the last two jackets I made for your test, trying to make my own sweater, taking hints from what I'm learning from you, which is wonderful. That makes me so happy. Uh, Jamie, I've made a handful of garments, but nothing I actually wear. They all feel too goofy and bulky, uh, for me rather than like normal clothes or anything flattering. Now, some of it is style related. Um, before I started making my cardigans, uh, and before, so let me put it this way. I don't know, I don't know if I would have worn a lot of my cardigans out immediately. Um, it really took me figuring out the style that I wanted to have going out and leaving the house. Now, I can officially say that I, if I had a 9 to 5 job with where I was having to go into the office and dress up, I'd be wearing one of my cardigans every single day. Because, I mean, I designed them, so I made them to be something that 
really love. And, you know, for me, the, the, the patterns that I make obviously are kind of statement pieces because they are bigger and bulkier. But I've also realized that I love layering them over things that are even bulkier. So it's a look, you know, so I'll wear like my sweatshirt and I'll put like my big cardigan over it like a coat and wear it more as like a coat than a cardigan. Um, so it is kind of playing around with the different ways to style items. Um, I don't know if I would wear any of my cardigans if I was super dressy, but all of my jobs have been like business casual. So I usually just wear a regular cardigan anyway, you know, not something dressy or fancy, just like a casual cardigan. Um, so it would have been a little easier, but if I had to wear like a suit and heels, I think the only cardigan that I'd probably wear with that would be my Granger. And that's like the cropped uh, ribbed cardigan with the quarter length sleeves. But some of it is the yarn that you use too. So if you use a more casual yarn and you're dressing up all the time, you might want to use a yarn that might translate into a more um, uh, dressier look. Uh, so like for instance, one of my testers who made the P uh, Pomona tea, she used like a metallic yarn and she wore her Pomona tea with dark jeans and heels because it looked dressy because the yarn was like this beautiful black metallic with like metallic silver accents. I mean, it was super cool, but it changed the entire look of the garment. So that may be helpful too, is exploring different yarns to see if that makes any difference on whether or not you, you feel like it can pair with an outfit you'd regularly wear. Um, make sure I don't fall too far behind. You guys are chatty chatty today. Thank you so much. Uh, Emma says, I make clothing a lot. I finished my panda cardigan yesterday. Initially, I made the sleeves three quarter, but added more length because it looked out of proportion. And that's the other thing is once you get comfortable making adjustments to your patterns, then it becomes a little bit easier. Um, but for super beginners, I think it can just be frustrating because you feel like you have to follow the pattern to a T. And then if you don't like it, then you feel like you failed. When in reality, it's okay to make adjustments and it's okay to change things about a pattern to make it fit you because you deserve to feel like you want to wear it. You don't want to feel like you wasted all this time for your finished objects to sit, you know, in a closet, you know, which mine sometimes do, but I think that's just because I have too many of them <laughs> and I don't go anywhere. Okay. Ellen says she has a sweater that's been sitting in a bag, so much work and the sleeves didn't work. Uh, Nilla, I love making garments too. The more you make, the better you get, which is very true because you really can start playing around and making adjustments. Dawn says she just finished making a very simple top. Emma just made a halter top, no, made a halter top a year ago and it looks awful and I still need to frog it. And crochet crop tops are difficult. There's a reason why I don't design them anymore. <laughs> um, those are much harder to judge uh, whether or not, you know, they're actually going to work for you. Um, Dawn finished her top and it's a little too small. Very disappointing. I added a border and I'm hoping once I block it, it will stretch out a bit more again. Uh, Sindra, uh, no, already read that one. And Jamie, oh, for sure. I have yet to find a pair of jeans that fits me perfectly all the way through. There you go. So if you struggle already, like, I'll tell you a quick story before I jump into these tips now that you guys have all answered my first question. Um, my grandmother took me shopping when I was in middle school, I think, and I had the worst self-esteem when it came to buying clothes because even back then I wanted to feel comfortable, but I wanted to feel pretty, you know, like just as a girl growing up, you know, in her preteen and teen age, it was really hard for me to find clothes that felt comfortable because I wasn't going to wear it if it wasn't comfortable. I wouldn't do it. If it was on my, on my stomach, like pushing into my stomach, I wanted everything like low on my hips, but I didn't have the figure really to wear things low on my hips. And it look, in my opinion, looking in the mirror, still look attractive and pretty to myself. Um, and so what would happen is I would buy jeans that fit my hips, but would be too big so that they wouldn't squeeze me, which meant that the butt was always too big 
you know, um, the crotch was always too big. And, and so it was just very difficult for me. And my grandmother took me out shopping and I had probably tried on 20 pairs of jeans and she found me in the dressing room crying. And she swore she was never going to take me shopping for jeans or pants again, um, because the experience was just terrible. Um, you know, so if you already have issues kind of finding clothes that fit you comfortably, it's going to be difficult, even with crocheted items. But just like, uh, who just said that, uh, let's see, Nilla, who said the more you make, the better you get, that's it. So the more you practice, the more comfortable you're going to be adjusting things to fit yourself. And you can't be afraid to frog entire projects because, for instance, you know, there are some cardigans, like some of my cardigans, it's difficult to add length unless you do it at the beginning. So when you're making all of your panels, you want to add your length. So if you get to the end and you're like, I just don't, I'm not going to wear this, frog the project, give yourself some breathing room, maybe work on something else for a little while, come back to it, add the length and create a project you know that you're actually going to wear. Uh, Jamie says, for most of my life, I've only worn clothes that I thought looked good no matter how uncomfortable they were. I always had marks from everything digging in and bleeding feet. Oh, no. Yeah, I was exactly the opposite. I wanted to look a certain way, but I refused to wear clothing that was not comfortable. Uh, so now it's like getting designed my own clothes. It's fantastic because I can make everything comfortable, oversized, you know, the way that I want it to feel. Um, if only I could crochet jeans. <laughs> but even then, that would be difficult in itself. So, okay, so let's jump into the tips that I have. I have a few tips that I've written down. Um, I don't know if I'm even going to work on this because I want to make sure that I'm chatting with you guys. Um, but uh, I start off my blog talking about what I'm talking about now and just you know giving a little bit of an intro but um my first tip for finding patterns that are going to work for you is to make sure that the pattern actually lists that it includes multiple sizes and that it includes your size so it sounds beginner but if you know if you've struggled with patterns you know you want to make sure that you're purchasing patterns that actually are listed as either size inclusive um, or that even if they only have three or four sizes that your size is included. Because if you're already struggling with patterns and you're already struggling to give yourself permission to change the pattern, then if you buy a pattern that only has a small and a medium and you need a 2X, then you're gonna have to do a lot of adjusting to make sure that that pattern fits. And at that point, you don't know if you're gonna be able to achieve the same look as what the designer was going for in her photos. So looking in the description when you're purchasing patterns um, you can usually see if they have specific sizes and I also think that if you're a beginner um, I tried to steer clear of made to measure patterns because for me it still felt like guesswork as a beginner so I didn't didn't branch out that way now some people that works perfectly fine they get really good results um, but I know for me as a beginner I really wanted someone to tell me exactly what to do and I wanted to follow the pattern because I wasn't comfortable making adjustments. And so finding patterns that actually said that they had my size was a big deal. Um, and then let's see. And you want to also look for measurements if you can. Now, there's ways to figure out the measurements uh, from gauge math, which actually I want to do an entire playlist dedicated to using the gauge uh, of a pattern and the tension, the designer's tension to figure out sizing, to change yarn sizes, to change hook sizes, because I feel like gauge math can be extremely helpful. Uh, I'm not going to dive into it today, though, because it kind of makes my brain hurt. I need like a, a bunch of notes to talk about it. <laughs> um, but you can look for your sizing. And I mentioned that, let's see, if you look on sites like Etsy or Ravelry, some patterns aren't going to have all this information in the description. Ravelry tends to require you to put more information. So um, if, for instance, this just happened to me. So I just posted a blog of crochet pattern. It's a roundup of crochet patterns for chunky cardigans. And there were quite a few patterns that on Etsy didn't list what sizes the pattern came in. I actually had to go to Ravelry and on Ravelry, 
since it requires it, I was able to pull that information and put that into my roundup. But that's extremely difficult. If you are if you go looking at a pattern and the description doesn't mention that there's multiple sizes in the pattern, I feel like the designer is kind of shooting themselves in the foot. Because if someone comes to that page and says, well, it doesn't say there's any additional sizes, so I'm skipping on this one because it's probably one size fits all and I'm going to have to make all these crazy adjustments. So um, I thought that was really interesting. But that's something that you can do. If you're on Etsy and you're searching and you find a pattern that you are super interested in, but you don't see the information about um, sizing or even about the yarn that's recommended or required or the hook size, you can try to search for that designer on Ravelry and see if you can find that pattern because Ravelry requires it. So you may be able to get a little more information about the pattern before you spend your money on the pattern. Let's see. And yes, some of them will say um, what the measurement range is for each size in their details of the description. If they don't, you can always reach out. If you're super concerned and you know, you're not sure, maybe you're between sizes, maybe you've lost weight, gained weight, and you're not really sure where you're going to fit in those sizes, shoot a message to the designer um, and ask them, hey, I'm, I'm really interested in purchasing this pattern, but there aren't estimated measurements for each size. Uh, do you mind me um, getting that information before I purchase the pattern? So that's, you know, and I've had people do that because for a long time, it, it took me quite a while to um, uh, get comfortable figuring out sizing with designing. And it wasn't until recently that I started adding the estimated measurements for each garment. Um, so that, you know, it takes some time. It takes some time. Um, but yeah, so the next thing is, and thank you, Ellen, for deleting that. I think, can you let me know if you can hide spam comments, like if you can block the person? Because we just get spam. I get spam comments sometimes on here. Um, let me know if you can actually, like, block those people. I don't know if you, I don't know if you are able to do that or if you can only delete the um delete the comment. Um Emma said for me making or buying trousers or shorts has been a nightmare forever. My butt sticks out so there's never enough butt room. Um do you have to wear a belt? Like that's something I've never had that problem. I actually never fill out the pants enough. So it's both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Um, Nella says, I find being picky with the yarn for the garment helps. If I go to a yarn shop for yarn, I put the skeins next to my face to see if the color looks good on me. It makes a huge difference in satisfaction. That's really smart, actually. Um, and I feel like I need to add that to the blog, um, just about making sure that you really pay attention to your yarn and you don't just buy whatever you can find. Um, I know obviously if you're testing a pattern, there may be a time crunch and you may end up purchasing, you know, colors that you may not love. Um, but if you're spending the time to purchase a pattern and it's a personal project just for you that's special, then, you know, splurge on the yarn a little bit. If, you know, if you know that it's something you're going to wear for a long time, then that can be helpful, like you said, to be picky. Um, okay, so the next tip that I have is to look for patterns that have photos of more than just one body type, <laughs> which is kind of difficult to find. Uh, and I have some tips on how to do that. So um, this is something that I have really, 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 really focused on um, as a designer. Um, I try really hard to make sure that I have multiple testers testing each of my sizes. So my, my newest patterns go from an extra, extra small to a 4X slash 5X. And it's, I think, nine sizes total. And so I'll have at least one to two to three people, sometimes four people, just because I hate saying no to people who want to test. Um, so I'll have around 25, 30 plus testers for just one garment. But what that does is it gives me all of these photos of all of these women and some men. We've had uh, uh, some of my testers, their husbands or their kids will steal their uh, garment and, you know, sometimes I'll get to share their photo, you know, with their measurements. But, um, I try really hard to showcase those 
testers images, not just in the pattern. So at the end of all of my newer patterns, there's actually a measurement guide that has a photo of each tester wearing their, their finished garment. It has the size that they made, and then it has their measurements, their body measurements. So chest, waist, and hips, and then their height. Um, so I found that that's been very helpful for people to really pick a size that they know is going to fit. Um, but I also started sharing the, the tester images in my Etsy listing. So if you go to my Etsy listing for any of my cardigans and you scroll through the photos, you're going to see that garment on more than just me. So, you know, if you're not my size, then you're probably going to find someone that's closer to your size or the shape of your body on someone else, but it's going to be in that main listing. Same thing for Ravelry. So when I upload stuff to Ravelry, I try to have lots of different photos of different people wearing the finished project. Um, it can be difficult if you find a pattern that you really like and there's three photos of it all on the same person. It can be hard to know like, okay, yes, this design says that it goes up to a four or a five X, or even maybe it only goes up to a two X or a three X, but there's no picture of that size. So that can make it really difficult for you to know, okay, even if I follow this to a T, how do I know it's actually going to fit the way that a three X item is supposed to fit or an XL item is supposed to fit if the model is an extra, extra small. So I think it's really important. And I really, really hope that more designers start doing this because I think it's extremely helpful for people who are looking for patterns to make sure that the design is well designed, <laughs> you know, and actually fits people the way that it should throughout all the sizes if they're offering all of the sizes. Um, so another tip that I have, uh, because some designers do share their tester photos, but they don't put them in the listing. So if you find a pattern you really like, let's say you're searching on Etsy or you're searching on Ravelry, and you find a design and you're like, oh, that's really awesome. I really want to try that design. Um, and you don't see any pictures of someone who looks like you wearing the design, then you can actually go to their social media pages and see if people have tagged them in photos wearing the design in question, or if the designer has actually shared images of that pattern that you're looking at on their feed from their testers. So where from someone other than them wearing the item. So the easiest way to do that is you, you know, you look up their name, their, their name on Ravelry or their name on Etsy. Sometimes Ravelry and Etsy will actually link to their social media. So I can't remember where it is. Etsy, I think you just scroll all the way down to the bottom of their shop on Etsy and they'll have social links available. Um, and Ravelry may be the same way. I need to double check. Um, but if you can find like the Instagram is probably going to be the best because it is such a photo focused sharing space versus Facebook where you can find tagged posts on Facebook. But the Facebook algorithm is so weird with tagging businesses and tagging people that unless they straight up shared images of their testers as a Facebook post, it may be harder to find uh, what you're looking for. But if you go on Instagram, um, you can look and find the designer that you're looking for, scroll through their feed, see if you can find the pattern that you're looking for, see if they have shared any slider photos. So like for me, when I release a new pattern, the first image is going to be of me wearing the item since my whole feed is focused on who I am as a designer, but you'll see a little square. So each image is a square you'll see another little square up in the top right. And that means that there are multiple images that you can slide through. So if you find one of those slider posts that is, that is um, featuring the pattern that you're looking for, and you can slide through the photos, sometimes they do share images of their testers wearing those items on their feed. They may even just post the testers straight on their feed. You know, it may be pictures, the main photo might be someone other than them wearing the pattern that you were looking at purchasing. The other thing you can do if you can't find anything in their main feed, and I'm actually going to do some little tutorials in my blog post for anyone who's not super familiar with Instagram. Um, but if you go to the tagged photos, so each profile, once you get to their profile, there's uh, how many buttons are there? Let me see. I think there's like four buttons above their grid. 
Um, and one of them is a little square with like a little person, I think. Let me double check. I need to pull this up on here. Uh, let's see. Let me go to my feed. It's probably gonna look different on the computer too. Yeah, it's like a little um, speech bubble with a person in it. If you click on that, you'll see all of the photos that that designer has been tagged in. In some cases, you might find that other people have posted images of their finished um, patterns, and you may actually be able to find some other people wearing it. I used this for clothing all the time. So if I was looking to purchase an item of clothing that I knew I wasn't going to be able to go out and um, try on, then I would actually go on Instagram and I would go to the tagged images from that clothing brand. And I would try to find images of people who looked like they were about my size wearing the item in question. And that kind of gave me an idea of like, okay, you know, is this going to look right on me? Um, but that can be super helpful is looking in their tagged photos. The third thing that you can do on Instagram um, is actually search the hashtag. So this does depend on how established the designer is, how long their patterns have been available, how many people are purchasing them, if there's enough people to actually be using the hashtag, and if the designer has made the um, pattern hashtagable. <laughs> so for me, I try to create pattern names that are easy to use as a hashtag. So I've got my Luna cardigan, I've got my... Um, Jenny sweater. I've got my Granger cardigan. So they're fairly short. It makes it easy to create a hashtag, my winky jacket. Um, and I use the hashtags. I try to make sure I'm using the hashtags in my stories and reels and things like that. Um, but if you search winky jacket and you choose the hashtag, then you'll, it'll show all of the posts that have used the hashtag winky jacket, um, which you know, for the most part is going to be pictures of people who have made my winky jacket. So that's kind of cool. And that's the, the bonus of Instagram being, you know, having the capabilities of a search engine is if you are promoting the hashtags as a designer, it makes it another place where people can find photos of finished patterns, um, which will help people kind of figure out what will look like on more people. Um, so those are the three ways. So going to look at their Instagram feed, checking the tagged photos and checking hashtags to see if you can find more images if you can't find them in the listing um, of people wearing that finished product to see how it would fit people who are not just the designer's size. Let's see. Okay, so my next tip is to make sure that you read the reviews. <coughs> Need some more coffee. And my throat gets started talking this much. <laughs> um, okay, so <clears throat> I'm big on reviews um, in general. So I'm always the one reading the reviews. I'm looking to see how many people have reviewed the items. I look at the negative reviews. I look at the positive reviews. Um, and so I feel the same way about patterns. <clears throat> I feel like if you go to an Etsy shop and the person has... Um, <clears throat> Maybe there's not even a review for the pattern in question, but if you go through and you read other reviews on their other patterns and people are saying that they're difficult to understand, um, that they're confusing, um, you have to know that if you're a beginner, that may not be the pattern for you to start out with. Because if you're comfortable, you know, you know that you're probably going to buy the pattern and make changes anyway, you know, so it's okay to purchase a pattern that might be a little confusing. Um, especially if it's not like a new stitch for you, if it's basic stitches, uh, you may still buy the pattern because you're like, I kind of want to see how they did this. And, you know, if I want to make adjustments, I can. But if you're a beginner, I would make sure that you find designs that have been reviewed and that people have left positive reviews and said, this was an easy to follow pattern, easy to understand, lots of photos, video tutorials, you know, you want to go through and read all of that to find out, okay, you know, was this a negative experience for other people? Am I setting myself up to have a negative experience? Uh, so I think it can be very helpful to read those reviews. Now, Ravelry does not have a space for reviews, but it has a space for projects. So if you're looking on Ravelry for projects, you can actually click on the pattern and you can click on projects to see if anyone else has completed 
that project. They can upload photos of their finished project. So it's just like Instagram. You know, you can go on and find other people who've completed the project and see photos. And then the people completing the project can leave notes. So that's kind of where you could look for what I would consider a review because they can say if they struggled with something, if they had to change something, um, if something wasn't quite right, uh, you can find that information out in the project section of Ravelry. So that can be very helpful. Uh, let's see. Is that everything? Yes, so they're reading their reviews and checking their social media. Are, are the two big ones for me. And that's usually what I will do. And when I do pattern roundups, I try to check everywhere. I try to make sure that they have a good presence on social media so it's easy to reach out to them. I make sure that they have good high quality reviews, um, even if they're a new designer. Um, as long as they have a few reviews on some things or have a good rating on Etsy, then I will include their pattern. Um, and I also try to make sure that um, I just lost, lost my train of thought. I try to make sure they have a few different sizes and that I can find photos of other people wearing those designs. So it's, you know, a process that, because I don't buy a lot of patterns anymore. Um, I did purchase three patterns this year from other designers that it's kind of on my to-do list to make as personal items. Uh, one of them I'm on Sleeve Island still. I haven't picked it back up. Um, and the other one, uh, the other two I haven't even started. So, uh, on the list though. Uh, okay. So my last and final big tip, and I would love if you have tips because this is my last tip. So if there are things that have helped you have a better experience creating garments, um, if there are techniques that you use when you're seeking out new projects, um, that have helped you have a better experience in purchasing patterns that you actually like, I would love for you to share them. So you can share them now. <laughs> um, but my last and final one is do a gauge swatch. Check your gauge. I know so many people don't do it. I didn't do it, but I feel like if I had, I would have had a better experience, um, at least trying to get close to the designer's gauge. Um, I have a whole blog post that I'm going to link to about how big of a difference it can make when you don't check your gauge, if you use the wrong hook size, if you use a different yarn, um, you know, it makes a big difference in the fit of the garment. Even if you're off by half a stitch, it can make a big difference, especially if you're doing uh, projects like mine that are super bulky where half a stitch is a lot. Um, you know, so it's, it's very important to get familiar with how to check your gauge, how to make a gauge swatch, um, making sure that the patterns you purchase have the gauge listed so that you know what that designer's tension was on the project. Um, and it helps you learn how to do gauge math, which again is going to be a whole nother uh, topic uh, that I'm hoping to start making some videos for a gauge math playlist on YouTube um, for, you know, changing changing out hooks, changing out yarn sizes, changing, uh, figuring out length and width if it's not listed in the pattern uh, and making those adjustments. So I think that will be pretty fun. Um, but that's all, those are my main tips. I, I hope that's helpful, uh, especially if people are finding this video as a replay uh, and you are, you know, struggling with figuring out how to find the right patterns. Um, you know, and sometimes it's, going ahead and, and investing in the pattern because there are a lot of free patterns out there on blogs, but I think that was always my issue too, is instead of trying to find an established designer who's got great reviews on their patterns, who's put a lot of work into those actual PDF patterns that have lots of photos to help, um, tips on you know changing things about the design, um, lots of feedback from testers, I would just try to find free patterns on blogs and websites, which don't ever have, at least from what I've seen, the amount of information that some of the PDF patterns have. So, you know, investing in a pattern or two just to see if that makes a difference, that might be helpful. Um, so looking on places like Etsy or Ravelry and seeing if there are some designs that you want to try instead of just searching on Pinterest for free tutorials. Um, 
Okay, so let me hop back in the chat. Okay, Ellen said I can put them in timeout. That's lovely. I like that you can put people in timeout <laughs> as an admin. Okay, Marsh Knitting, hello. Uh, says I love to make a sweater. It's on, I would love to make a sweater. It's on my to-do list. I did a cardigan, but my middle part was super small. Uh, the sleeves were awesome. I think you mean the sleeves. The sleeves were awesome. Um, and Ellen says, check out Evelyn's pattern. Thank you, Ellen. Um, Jamie says, if they haven't shared their testers photos, then shame on them. <laughs> That's a conversation for a whole nother video. And Jamie, you need to let me know. I think we would have fun doing a live chat. Totally putting that ball in your court, but I think that would be fun. Uh, we can talk about your experience as a tester because you have tested a lot. Um, and we can talk about kind of the pros and cons of what you've dealt with. I think that would be a really good video, you know, if you're interested. Um, Emma says, maybe I should try designing shorts and trousers with extra butt room for curvy bottomed ladies. Yes, you can totally do that. Um, and I have to say, when I designed my overalls, um, I really had to work closely with my testers to figure out how to actually create butt space because I didn't need it. I could just do zero increases straight up and down. Um, but it was really helpful to have the testers give me feedback and say, no, this is not going to work. This is what you're going to have to do to make sure that this size fits correctly. Um, so it really has to kind of be a well-oiled design team for, I think, for a designer to truly understand how to fit different body types because we are all only one body type you know so unless you have multiple people in your household that are different sizes um, that can try things on and give you feedback i think it's extremely important to have um, an open door communication with your testers and be willing to make changes and adjustments to your patterns if they say this is just not working you know instead of sticking with your guns and saying you know no i'm not going to make adjustments this is how it's going to be written you know because then you're just kind of taking the easy way out you know um uh Sindra says I'm not very fluent in Instagram I have trouble finding stuff on there yes so I will put um, a little tutorial on how to find tag images and how to search hashtags on my um on my blog post it'll just be like a video tutorial I mean not a video um a photo tutorial where I'll circle some of the different stuff. Um, but once you get fluent, it's, it's a pretty fun app to just search for different things and find inspiration. Um, it's my favorite of the social media channels, but it always has been. Um, not a huge fan of the push for reels, but that's okay. You know, I'll deal with it. <laughs> I just like sharing pretty pictures. Uh, let's see. Ellen says, before I purchase a pattern, I will ask the maker a question how fast they get back to me and the way they answer says a lot. That may be something that I could put um, into, into my blog post because I do think that's important that, especially if you're a beginner. Now, if you're a beginner and you're buying a pattern that says, and, and the designer only sells intermediate and advanced patterns, then it may be a situation where they do that because they're not going to get as many questions about the pattern because they go ahead and slap an advanced sticker on it and say, you know, you have to be really comfortable with reading patterns. If you're not, you shouldn't even be messaging me. Sometimes that's the vibe that I get. Um, I have put myself in a position to get a lot of questions and, you know, people messaging me because I do super beginner friendly patterns. So people are going to get confused. There may be things that I assume that they're going to understand as a beginner that they don't, um, you know, so when you purchase, if you're looking at a beginner friendly pattern, that is a situation where you probably should be able to message the designer and hear back from them pretty quickly. Uh, if they're creating tutorials for people who are just starting out, they have to know that they're going to have more questions than someone who's selling, you know, quite advanced, intricate patterns. Jamie says, so everyone can see how much I complain. No, because you've had good experiences too. So it wouldn't all be complaining. 
And Ellen says, no, Jamie, so we can learn from how much you complain. Your complaints usually make much sense. And that's true, too. You know, I think there's a difference between just complaining and being critical. Um, you know, you as a person are someone who expects more from people because you expect more from yourself. So if someone is not being the best person that they can be in this world that they've decided to live in, so for instance, a crochet designer, um, the bar is pretty high these days. There are a lot of amazing designers who work really hard to create fantastic patterns, um, you know, create communities. And so, you know, there's really no excuse to decide to kind of be subpar um, and not expect people to call you out and say, this is, this is not acceptable, you know. Um, constructive complaining, yes. Uh, Fairy Mama loves seeing all of your growth. I'm watching on TV and watching on my phone for comments. Yes, that's helpful. That's what I have my computer over here uh, so that I can watch my comments. Um, okay, well, we are right at that hour. I did not get any work done on this. Um, but this was something I really wanted to make sure I focused on all of the tips that I had. Um, I think that my next Tuesday live... I may be starting a crochet along, just so you guys are all prepared. Um, if it's not next Tuesday, it's going to be the Tuesday after that that I start it. Um, but it's going to be the Winky Jacket. So this guy right here, um, I'm pretty sure. That's my goal. Um, I wanted to do it with this one. But I have to finish this one so quickly, there was no way that I'd have enough time to do all of the live videos before I needed this one finished because my grandmother-in-law's birthday is coming up and this is going to be finished by then. Um, so I have a feeling that I'm going to be doing, um, I think I'm going to use the Michaels Eco, Eco stuff, uh, the Eco tie-dye. And I'm going to hold that double. So if you want to join in on the Winky Jacket, the pattern is in my Etsy shop. So you can grab the pattern, make sure you have everything you need. Uh, and like I said, I'll either be starting it this next Tuesday or the Tuesday after that. Um, and that will be just like the Luna. Uh, I will work the um, sessions between YouTube and Instagram. But on Friday, so this Friday, this Friday on Instagram during my regular session, I will be going live with SJ of uh, the Wolflower Co., uh, who is also a crochet designer. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I've been wanting to start to do more of my kind of pink sheep and friends interviews and, you know, introducing you guys to some new designers or letting you ask questions to designers that maybe you already follow but want to learn more about. Uh, learn about their design process. You know, a lot of these designers have very different aesthetics from me, so it's really fun to get to see um, what they're doing and kind of what their process is like. So um, that will be this Friday at 12 o'clock Central Time over on Instagram, and I will upload it here to YouTube. So if you are not on Instagram, you don't want to catch the live there or replay it there, I will have it uh, uploaded to YouTube because I feel like sometimes it's easier to rewatch things on YouTube and to kind of save them for later. Uh, so I will be doing that as well. But I think that's everything for today. Ellen says, don't forget the thumbs up. Yes, thank you. Uh, and subscribe if you haven't, if you enjoyed the video. Um, and Jamie says, what a hype woman. <laughs> so yes. Um, okay, cool. Well, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and that you enjoyed today's live. Uh, yes. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys on Friday. So happy hooking guys. See you later.